no matter what you're going to make and how big it is, you start by centering the clay the same way. It's important to me that the widest part of the form be below the shoulder. I think that really adds to the kind of muscula muscularity to the form. Now here's an important, important thing. When you have decided what kind of jar and lid you want to make, you have to keep your brain wrapped around exactly which dimension on the jar you need to measure. And this kind of jar where there's a, the, the lid has an overhang and a flange that fits down inside the jar, the really crucial dimension is the inside diameter of the jar. And you can use just regular old calipers. You can get these for six bucks at an art supply store. This is rusted and cruddy, but it's basically, it's a basic caliper. You can measure things this way or this way. I'm going to be measuring the inside diameter of the, this, the neck on this jar. It's a really good idea to measure while the thing is turning slowly, just in case it might be a little bit oval. And I'm trying to get this as close as I can. That's about right. So when you have this measurement, you can compare the calipers to a ruler. On this ruler, this is about exactly 11 centimeters, or you can pick inches, whichever works out best for you. This is also about exactly four, four and a quarter inches. A way you can do that is take a little snig of clay, put it on the bat next to your jar, and write 11 centimeters or four and a quarter inches with a tool in the clay. And then the advantage of having that measurement is that 
should something happen to the lid or the jar after it's dried a bit and has shrunk, you can make another one. That's how I learned to do it. But then I acquired this super duper tool called a lid master, which has the way cool advantage of measuring the same distance at this end and this end. So I'm measuring the inside diameter on the neck of this jar with the lid master, close as I can get it with just a little bit of, little tiny bit of play. And I take this and put it down. I'm gonna cut the jar off the bat, but leave it on the bat. Now I'm going to make the lid for that jar. This kind of lid gets thrown upside down. And I'm starting out with plenty of clay so that I can leave a nice thickness of clay to trim a nib knob with. So I've thrown this like a little bowl and left the rim nice and thick. That rim is very thick so that I can split it. And I'm using my piece of t-shirt and my needle. And the first time you try this, it'll seem like you don't have enough fingers, but you do. You need to hold the ends of the t-shirts out of the way with your little finger. Hold the needle kind of like a pencil. With the wheel moving pretty slowly, lay the t-shirt down across the rim and press the needle down through the cloth about halfway through the thickness of the rim and press down and you have split it in a in a much neater, cleaner way than you could have with just the needle alone. And then this outer part becomes the overhang. And the inner part becomes the flange. And the flange needs to tilt, needs to angle inward a little bit so that the lid can come on and off easily. And here's where you need to check and keep checking. That's pretty close, but it might be a little tiny bit, tiny bit too big. So I'm gonna use my thumb. So, that corner between the flange and the overhang is the exact dimension we measured on the inside of the neck of the jar. And this is where your three-dimensional brain gets its Wheaties. I left all that clay down there to trim a, a knob later. So I'm using this jar itself as the chuck to hold the lid. I'm going to turn. This is the lid that was thrown upside down with lots and lots of extra clay. So I can see that the inside of this lid has a very shallow V to it. 
So I know that the outside of the lid is also going to have to have an arch, but I can feel or I can measure the thickness I have left over to make a knob with. I can make a very tall knob or I can cut some of it off. I have options. This fits on the jar just the way it's supposed to fit in the end. And it's supported. And I can, because it has a little play in it, I can center it just the way we center bowls and cups and things when we're ready to trim them. Give it a spin and hold your finger still and see if the lid hits it on one side and not another. I'm going to use the big loop trimming tool and start thinking like a woodworker. And if I knock it off center, I can fix it. So I'm going to do something, I know I have way, way more clay than I need. This is like roughing out a wood sculpture with a chainsaw. I have decreased the weight quite a bit that's pressing down on the neck and shoulders of the jar too. And the cool thing about using the jar to hold the lid is I can just pick it up and feel how thick I have, how much thickness I have left. And I haven't invested huge amounts of effort in getting that supported. And this time I have chosen to make the, the knob an echo of the shape of the jar. It's a repetition. Some people throw hollow knobs. You, you can throw them hollow. I'm going to stick a needle up from the bottom just to give all that moisture a fire escape it's as a steam vent. Mm -hmm. And here's where I put the getting the, the needle parallel to the axis of the knob best I can. I'm just going to stab a hole right down in there as deep as I can into the center of the thickness. That is going to leave a little hole on the inside. 
but that gives a way for the, the moisture in the solid knob to get out of there peaceably. <laughs>